Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a table full of spray guns. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a beginner's guide into paint guns, airbrushes. I'm going to give you my personal opinion on these guns on the table they've all served me well i would recommend all of them to a degree but we'll talk through these along the way so if you are looking for a spray gun or an airbrush and i know it's really really daunting when you first start out there are hundreds of brands out there and it is so hard to pick the one you want that you think is going to serve you well for the job that you're doing so I'll guide you the best I can and sort of steer you in the right direction of the way I got sort of steered in the direction of going and the, they've served me well guys, they really have. If you've seen some of my other videos, the paint finishes that I can get and things like that, the artwork things and all that sort of stuff with airbrushes and spray guns, these guns on the table will get you them results down. So we'll start off with paint guns. now. The first gun that I picked up when I first started out was a sealer and I needed to do some clear coating because I was airbrushing for quite a while and I was sending all my painted panels to other sprayers to get clear coated because I didn't have the setup at the time because when you're starting out you're on an absolute budget and these things can cost you money and over time you sort of save up as I have I've saved up and you buy the guns and things along the way so I started out with a 10 pound I've still got it it's a 10 pound little spot gun and I was using this for clear coating small little things I was doing at the time and it worked it got the clear coat down for me not a brilliant finish but it will get you the job done and I've still got it as a memory, it's here. It still works. Sometimes I'll just pick it up for the fun of it and give it, give it a whirl again and it still sprays, not bad. So that's the 10 pound one that you can buy. You get these Amazon, eBay, cheap. So that would say, I'd say this is the cheapest end of the scale, but it does the job. If you are looking at getting some paint down, a little bit of clear coat, doing small stuff that they're, they're ideal. If you're on a budget and you've got a small compressor, it could get you, get you down, guys. And then I sort of steered on, I started more and more into clear coat of my own work, base coat of my own work, got a bigger compressor, not an expensive one, it was a 100 litre, sounded like a tractor at the side of the studio. The neighbors complained and moaned, didn't like the noise. But you have to do what you do when you start out. You have to progress as you go along. So I got given a few guns. I got given off a good friend who's not around anymore, bless him. But he gave me a couple of the Aerograph type MP little spot guns. If you've ever seen these before, this is old, really old. I've got a few of these. There's a few more in the drawer next door. But these are a cracking little gun. I've hooked these up to the airbrush adapters and then ran it on the main line coming in and they're good for little spot touch-ups. They still work now, they just need a good overhaul and a good clean up, but I don't use these anymore. But if you do see these, cracking little gun. So that's that, that's the aerograph. Then I started moving on to bigger jobs, <clears throat> as you will when you progress and get a little bit more confident. So the first bigger guns that I started getting was De Vilbris. I went down the De, De Vilbris route and I picked up an SLG. Now, this is like the starting line, it says on the handle. Um, it's a 1.3 setup. I think these go for around 60, 70 pounds for this, this gun. And this was my clear coat gun at the time. And it the finish wasn't bad, I was getting clear coat down with it. It done the job, it served me well. So if you're a beginner and you're going into the De Vilbis route, 
it's not a bad starting out gun it will get you some paint down not a problem um, this still works now this is really old but it still works I don't use it now uh, but it does work it does get you the paint down so that is not a bad recommendation for a beginner starting out and you want to drop some paint down that's the first Evilbis that I got then we moved on to an FLG we've got the FLG uh, finish line this is a 1.4 and these come in at about there's different prices I picked this up for 109 at the time probably a little bit dearer I checked online this morning and some of these guns are coming out at silly prices compared to what I paid from they've shot up in price so the FLG will get you a cracking finish down on clear coat I took this into the body shop and they all used uh, GTI Pros and Pro Lights and I was getting the same finishes down with the FLG as the Pro Light. I think this one's got personally I think it's a little smaller fan pattern a little smaller than the Pro Light and Pro but it will get you a good finish down base coats clear coats you can get this gun in different needle and nozzle sizes so you can use these for primers and they work really well cracking gun at the price for a Deville Briss so we've got that one then I opted for we got the GTI Pro this is in a 1.3 brilliant gun recommended yes because they put a cracking finish down I've had these years and they work brilliantly the only downside I'd say about these that I've heard people have had trouble with is the baffle inside so when you take your needle and nozzle out this piece at the front pulls away and there is like a little washer shaped baffle inside there sometimes they can pinch and if they pinch it just screws the um, the airflow and paint will be a bit funny out of these but that's the only thing you've got to look out for they're not expensive to replace you can get a new little baffle that goes in job done you can get different caps for these as well so I've got a clear coat set up which I've got the T110 air cap and I've got a base coat set up and I've got the TE10 for the base coat so GTI Pro recommended yes still quite price set for these guns but they're worth the money guys so we've got the GTI Pro then I've got the Pro Lite which is basically an updated version of the Pro so it's lighter in your hand more comfortable I think in your hand seems a little bit more sort of small on hand it just fits better same sort of finishes that you get with just a lighter gun and you notice that lighter feel in your hand especially when you've got paint filled up in the cups you notice the weight difference so GTI Pro light cracking gun still own one today I will not get rid of them guns so that's the Pro Light. now I'll move on to a couple of airbrushes where I started so when I moved into the airbrush scene I started off with Aerographs which is an original to Bill Bliss so we've got the Super 63's I own three of these and these all work absolutely spot on brilliant detail brushes guys these are excellent considering how old these are they're really really good the only thing you've got to wash out with these is don't use solvents to clean them because all your little washers and things inside are like rubber seals and it just destroys them so that's one thing to look out for if you've got the super 60 freeze but if you just use mild cleaners they're absolutely fine and these still work today so they're brilliant brushes and that's what I started off with then I moved on to Harder and Steenbeck now if you don't know about Harder and Steenbeck and you're an absolute beginner and you've come across that brand and you're thinking shall I buy Harder and Steenbeck I would recommend it yes if you're starting out they are good brushes they are easy to clean the parts are cheap so I started out with I've not got it here I've sold it on I started out with a focus from Harder and Steenbeck that was my second airbrush I ever brought 
really good brush that was a 0.2 needle and nozzle setup and it looked very similar to the evolution it basically identical there's a couple of different pieces on this on the evolution solo and then i got this which was the evolution solo so this was the third harder and steam back brush i got and i've still got today it works absolutely fine 0.2 needle and nozzle setup and the good things about harder and steam back brushes you can interchange your needle and nozzle setups across the brushes so if i wanted to turn turn this one into an infinite all i've got to do is buy the nozzle the needle and you've got basically an infinity in your hand because you've got the adjuster on the back so they're nice interchangeable brushes then i moved on to the actual infinite so we've got that one here now the first gen infinite i noticed when i was using a lot of solvents because i was doing a lot of automotive airbrushing at the time i was cleaning with thinners and it stripped the internals of the brush here it just it didn't ruin the brush but it just tarnished the coating and i noticed that on the original evolution and the original infinite then i moved on to another infinite which is the cr plus which is a better body on the front the actual coating the plating's a lot better so when you use your solvents you've got no problems with that you've got the ptfe solvent proof washers and things in these so you're good to go with solvents so we had them then i got hold of some it was a little buy on ebay i got some pashes pache which are these ones here these are old these are like a jar fed airbrush at the bottom single action so you just press down and it intermixes with your air and you get paint straight out these are cracking brushes when i got these and they still work today i've got these are three i've got another three of these in the drawer on the other side but brilliant brushes for getting some paint down you can get some real nice intricate detail and the actual triggers when you press these down are so soft they're so sensitive when you press these down so they're good brushes guys i know they're old but they work they've served me well so we've got the pachets there then when i came from the devilbus brushes the big spray guns i got into youtube and started watching youtube channels and things like that and then i found a guy called tony's refinishing if you don't know tony's refinishing i'll leave a link in the description because you can see a lot of these bigger spray guns that i've got he's done reviews on and you'll see him spraying with these guns and that's what made me steer towards iwata on the bigger spray guns i'd already moved across to iwata on airbrushes but i'll run through the spray guns with you now so the first gun that i picked up was a box set so i had three guns in a box and it was the iwata w400 valeria which is this one this is a zero point this is a 1.3 setup on the needle and nozzle and this would be my go-to clear coat gun brilliant gun guys these are coming out at price wise i looked today online and some of these guns are shot up these are on one side was 265 plus bat on this gun but at that price it's well worth the money when it comes to clear coat guns i would body shop because i came from devilbris i would go devilbris clear coat really good i what up valeria clear coat really really good base coat again cracking in this gun so that's the w400 i water and in that box set i got the black flash which is a zero point a 1.8 setup i keep reverting back to airbrush it's a 1.8 setup so i've got that for the primer and that atomizes really really well you'll find with the i waters airbrushes and big spray guns the atomization is really really good paint efficiency in the bigger guns is really really good as is devilbris so they're both sort of even on paint and finish fin efficiency and putting the paint down i'd say out the two brands that's why i've got them because they both perform really well so you've got the black flash that came in the box and then in that box was the impact junior 
brilliant little uh, mini jet gun. I've used this quite a bit in my videos. Clear coating, base coating, absolutely spot on. Even thin down primers I've used with this and it's been absolutely perfect. So that's the Impact Junior. I then picked up the Blue Flash, which is this one here. So this one's the Blue Flash body shot range of 1.3. Good price, good all round gun, will get you clear coats down, will get your base coats down, it will get you primers down if they're thin, nothing too thick. But a, a good all round beginner's gun that will get you some good finishes down and paint on a budget. So that's another good one there at the Iwata. So then I'll move you on to <clears throat> airbrushes. Now, as I say, I moved from Harder and Steamback and then went down the <clears throat> eye water route and never look back. The first eye water that I brought was the HP BCS, which is a 0 0.5 needle and nozzle setup, and this is a bottom feed airbrush. And this has been an absolute workhorse. You can get detail down with this brush and you can get some really good paint coverage down with it. You can fit the jars to the bottom so it's quick interchanging. You see a lot of um, t-shirt airbrush artists use these. They're great for doing big pieces. A lot of um, people that do like the wall mural art use these because they're quick interchanging on the bottom. And I picked it up, never looked back. I got this from Simon Murray over in Ireland, went on a course with Drew Blair and Simon went, oh, have a look at one of these. <clears throat> he won't look back, and I'm so glad he pushed me in the eye water sort of. That is my path that I went down. If I hadn't gone and seen Simon Murray, I'd have stuck with Harder and Steenbeck and still been with them now. And he sort of like guided me into eye water, and that was the first brush I got, and it was brilliant. So I've still got that. The second eye water that I brought, <clears throat> I jumped straight onto the Micron because I was using the Infinitec for mm. detail <clears throat> at the time which is a 0 0.15 can be a little bit finicky you've really got to get your paint dialed in with the Infinitec as you know if you've got one it's a real small needle and nozzle setup so from the BCS I jumped straight into the next eye water which was the custom Micron Put the infinity down uh, basically never picked it up again because once you pick a micron up you know the difference straight the way and the first thing you notice when you pick a micron up is the trigger for me it was the trigger coming from the infinity trigger and i was so used to the infinity when i picked the micron up and went to spray with it for the first time the paint was instant and then I held the two brushes up and just seen that I was thinking crikey this infinity has got like delay it felt like a delay in the trigger and then when I moved on to this the actual accuracy of the trigger on the custom micron is so precise more comfortable so I stuck with the micron and I was using the micron for all my portrait work wouldn't put the thing down it was like permanently attached to my hand was the custom micron so i moved on to that so recommended yes brilliant brush not had any problems with it expensive for what it is but at the end of the day you are buying a top quality eye water guys and they're outstanding they really are <clears throat> so i'm glad i've got one so that's the custom mark on the cm SB V2 version, this is 0.18 needle and nozzle setup side feed on that one. So sticking to the eye waters, I thought, oh, I'm going to buy again, I'm going to get another one. So I moved on to the HP SB Plus on a 0.2. Outstanding brush again, guys. <clears throat> another great side feed. Brilliant brush, nice and comfortable. Feels like the eye water in the hand. Triggers a little bit more stiffer than the Micron, but a great detail brush. So that's that one. So we've got that. 
and then the next sort of move up on the Iwata range was a Takume. So we've got the Eclipse Takume, which is a 0.35. It's the new generation one, so you've got a slightly different needle, bigger cup to the side. I've just done a review on this brush, guys, a little update review. So yeah, another cracking brush. Feels like the Micron again in your hand. Lovely trigger on these. Brilliant for detail. Brilliant all rounder at a good price. So that's the Takume. We had that one. And then I sort of jumped, didn't jump ship because I've still got the Iwatas and I still love the Iwatas. I sort of got led into Mr. Hobby, went down that route. And the first Mr. Hobby Krios I picked up was the PS270. Now, these are, I would class this as a good beginner's brush, really reasonable priced. And when I brought this and had a first play with it, I was absolutely blown away by how good these brushes are. For what you get in, in the package, you get the Mac valve, 0.2 needle and nozzle setup. You get your adjuster at the back. The body on these are really light because you've got your slope on this piece here. It's a nice long brush. Mac valve, really comfortable to work with. Nice trigger. So that's the PS270, recommended definitely. So we've got the PS270 and I was looking through their brush range and I thought, oh, I wonder what the PS771 is like on a 0.18, because I'm thinking my Micron's the go-to brush for detail, but I really like the length of the body of the PS270. Let's see what the 771's like for a detail brush. Got this, chucked some paint in it, and was blown away again on how good these brushes are. It's a cracking detail brush. Um, same sort of, I had a question on one of the comments the other day on the Creos and talking about weight difference between the two and what the sort of difference is between these two brushes. Now, these are lighter. The 771 does come out lighter. This one does feel weightier, the PS270. You are getting, between the two, the reason why this one is a better brush than the 270, even though the 270 will get you some cracking detail down, I would say the trigger is softer on this. It's, I like the trigger on the 270 because it's sloped down to the front. This one's more of a straighter trigger on the top, um, but the trigger is really, really sensitive. It feels like the sensitivity of a Micron. You've got looks near enough identical the front head assembly on the micron to this the detail side of things will match the micron with this you've got your adjuster at the back and the price bracket on this is really good because you've got the mac valve at the front so recommended the 771 definitely for a detail brush brilliant so that's a 771 i moved into that kept with the creos and i was looking at something of a more all-rounder for coverage because I've got the Iwata for coverage which was the bottom jar feed. I was mainly using this one for a bit of bigger coverage when it came to airbrushing with the jars on the bottom. Still do use it and I came across the Grios PS290. Now I've just done a review on this one guys as well, a little update review. Outstanding brush, it really is. Um, it's my first time getting like a miniature trigger uh, airbrush. So I got this out of the box, chucked some paint in it, and this, this blew me away as well, because you get two caps with that, you get the spot cap, and you get the fan cap with it. So bonus, because you get two caps. The price tag on this, they vary from like 98 pounds up to 150. I paid 150 for this. And as I said in the other video, it's worth it all day long. If you want to get a bit of good coverage down, you're doing RC bodies, miniatures, things like that, you want to get a little bit more paint down, brilliant brilliant brush so we had that one and that was a sort of like they were like the last purchases that i sort of made then i was watching some youtube videos and i came across rich pen now 
there is one brush that I'm after and it's by Rich Pen but it's a signature brush by a guy in America that's done a signature brush and that is my next purchase but it is very expensive and I can't afford to do it at the minute but that's my last airbrush that I will purchase so I moved on to Rich Pen and I picked up the Rich Pen 112A now the reason why I picked the 112A up you can get the 112B which has got a little cup on the top they're both exactly the same brushes but this one's got the scallop out the top and the reason why I picked this up is because it reminds me of the Aerograph Super 63 and I thought oh we'll give that a try so I got this these are this worked out to £105 for this one and I thought I'll give it a go chuck the air in it put it on and these are cracking brushes for detail as a detail brush these are unbelievable and they are really really light guys it just feels like you've got a biro in your hand weight wise they are so light there's just nothing on them so you can get this version with the little cup so if you want to use basically a couple of drops of paint this brush is the one to go for or if you want something where you can get a little bit more paint in you can get the 112B which has got a cup like the Harder and Steenbeck little small cup on the top and they come in at the same sort of price about 105 so yeah another great brush is the Rich Pen brand so I think we've sort of covered it bigger spray guns again I've got the Iwata WS400 it's an old gun I got given that it looks absolutely beaten to death but it works absolutely fine and for clear coating the WS400 is outstanding it really is I've yet to use it in the studio because I'm always I always pick up the W400 when it comes to clear coat I just jump onto that I just need to get a pot for this it needs a revamp I need to get a new cup for the top and then replace the two knobs that go on the back because they're they've come away but it all still works the guy that gave me this at the body shop he says oh can you bring the WS400 in he had a Bentley to spray and I seen him spray with this gun and the atomization and the way it laid the clear coat down was incredible so yeah another recommended gun is the WS400 I think we've covered all the bits so if you are a beginner and you're looking for a spray gun for getting base coat and clear coat down on a budget I would go FLG as a budget uh, airbrush side of things on a budget to go with this if you're starting out Harder and Steenbeck Evolution Solo or Creos PS270 for the price so three guns there one gun two airbrushes as a beginner at good prices will get you started get you some good finishing down get you some cracking detail down and these three items will last you guys they really will um, and you won't break the bank at that you'll be getting three good guns to get you started if you're moving up and <clears throat> base coat gun clear coat gun and the next bracket of airbrush I would go Deville Bris Root either GTI Pro GTI Pro Lite as your main base coat or clear coat to join in with that on airbrush side of things if you want you're going for more detail I would then pick up either the Creos the Takumi or the original the Iwata Eclipse I think it's the CS I'd go them with the Deville Bris set up as your base and clear and then you've got two cracking detail brush detail all round a brush again so that would be sort of like your next price bracket up then if you were going more expensive 
I'd say clear coat gun WS400 or W400 and then you can go into your micron price bracket for your detail or I'd go HPSB plus on them with that sort of joint package with that and you've got some cracking guns there back to budget again if you're really on a low budget and you're starting out you could go the SLG you could start out with that one and if you're doing a bit of t-shirt art definitely recommend the Arwata Eclipse the BCS HP BCS on the 0.15 brilliant brush um, if you even go if you can get older I don't know if you can even get older these anymore but again if you're doing like t-shirt sort of stuff the pashes they'll get you there the brilliant brushes you want to go down the mini jet route and you're on an absolute budget you can go for your 10 pound cheap little spot gun like that and they'll get you the paint down guys they really will i started there i've started where you lot have started and this just doesn't all come at once this is like years and years and years down the line and these brushes have I've got these along the way we all start somewhere and we all have very shallow pockets at the start and then sometimes you get a chance where you've got a real deep pocket and you can spend a lot of money so yeah on a budget you want to get a drop of paint down it'll do the job it'll get you a bit of base coat down it'll get you a bit of clear coat down at a budget so yeah recommended because i've got one then you can move on to that a little bit more expensive these are about 117 then you've got that on top it's a great gun it will last it does a brilliant drop of clear and it does a brilliant bit of base coat and i'll put primer down with this thin down and it's been absolutely spot on so i want a brand brilliant De Vilbris, brilliant moving on to brushes Pache them ones I'm not so clued up on the new sort of Pache stuff but I've heard a lot of rumours mm, not so good that's why I didn't continue on with Pache but these original ones here with the jars brilliant Iwata's airbrush brilliant Creos brilliant Rich Pen brilliant brushes Arder and Steenbeck yes evolution solo that's that's been brilliant infinity because they're good brushes i've still got them they're really really good brushes they'll they'll get your paint down they'll get your detail down but there's better ones on this table and i'll say that to everyone i'm just going to be honest they are better brushes on this table than them two there really is rich pen that's a better brush a lot better brush you know so it's depending on which way you want to go guys i'm just giving you this rough guide honest opinion on what's on this table on what i've got what i've experienced they all work they're all good brands and they're all still going you get some of these brands that pop up pump a few brushes out or guns out and then you don't hear of them again you can't get spares for them this that and the other these guns on the table you can get the spares for you can get the parts for even i think you can still get for the super 63 there's guys that are doing parts for these and the pashes they're still going you can get these parts so yeah i hope you enjoyed this video on my beginner's guide into airbrushes and spray guns I'll leave as many links as I can guys for you in the description below on where you can pick these up. There'll be one site that I recommend for the Iwata airbrushes. I'll leave the link in the description to that. When it comes to things like the Super 63 and the Pashes, I don't know. They're, they're the sort of things you're going to have to hunt around for and have a look. Bigger spray guns, I'll leave you a link to a reasonable site where you can get them from price wise. but it's best to just shop around for these bigger guns there's so many companies out there that are doing different prices and deals and things like that as i say i looked this morning on google and some of these prices of these guns have gone through the roof so you've got to hunt around 
I got a good box set with these at the time and it was a good price for three guns in one box. Same as the airbrush side of things, the link in the description for the iWatters, brilliant company, good customer service, you can't go wrong, that's why I'm going to recommend that one in the link below. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it, I hope you can join me in the next one, which is going to be another video today, I've got two coming up today guys, and the thing that's in the video next is behind this camera. Fingers crossed it works, hope so. So I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. I hope this video's helped you out in some way. Like, share, subscribe. See you in the next one, guys.